Breaking news. The collapse of Russia's hold on Kazakhstan. Even less was known about Kazakhstan in the West about Ukraine before Russia's invasion in February 2022. We all have the bad habit of thinking of Russia as the Soviet Union did, which is to say, centered in Moscow. Now that we know Putin is motivated by false historical theories according to which Ukraine has no right to exist, it's important to consider whether or not these ideas could be applied to other former Russian provinces. When Pope Francis was first elected in 2013, Italians made a big deal out of the fact that his paternal ancestors were from Piedmont in northern Italy. However, it soon became clear that the future Pope's family had emigrated to Argentina from Genoa and the surrounding northwest Ligurian region in the early 20th century. Consequently, Pope Francis's maternal ancestors may have known Pope Benedict XV, whose name he took and who reigned from 1914 to 1922 and whose own family roots were in Liguria. They would have known, at the very least, that a fellow Ligurian had succeeded. It turns out that their shared ancestry isn't the only thing that links Popes Benedict XV and Francis. While serving as Pope during World War I, Benedict XV did everything in his power to prevent the outbreak of hostilities. To end what he called a useless slaughter, Pope Benedict XVI wrote to the warring parties in August 1917, proposing a seven-point peace plan that included simultaneous and reciprocal reduction in armaments and international arbitration. Historically, it appeared that Benedict's efforts were fruitless at first. He proposed an armistice between the United States and Germany, but both countries rejected the idea, thinking the Pope was biased in favor of the other. The war continued for another year and three months. The Vatican was not invited to the post-war Paris Peace Conference because Pope Benedict's position was seen as so minor. Some of Benedict's original ideas, however, were incorporated into Woodrow Wilson's 14-point peace plan in January 1918, which was ultimately implemented. More generally, the pontiff's efforts to end the war and his support for greater European and international integration gradually gained credibility, elevating the papacy and elevating the Vatican's diplomatic role in international affairs. As his own efforts to broker peace in the midst of another major European conflict, this time in Ukraine, appear to be stalling, Pope Francis may be hoping for a similar historical vindication. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky made it abundantly clear during yesterday's highly anticipated visit to Rome, which included a 40-minute encounter with Pope Francis, that he is not interested in whatever secret peace plan the Vatican may be cooking up. Following the meeting, Zelensky tweeted that he had urged Pope Francis to condemn crimes in Ukraine. Because the victim and the aggressor can never be on equal footing. Later, in an Italian television special broadcast from the Piazza Venezia iconic Altar of the Fatherland, Zelensky categorically rejected the idea that the Pope or the Vatican could play a mediating role. All due respect to His Holiness, we don't need a mediator between Ukraine and the aggressor that has seized and occupied our territory, Zelensky said. No one can negotiate with Russia, Zelensky declared. We cannot have peacemakers. They, referring to Russian forces, took away citizenship from people in the occupied territories, he said. They coerced them into serving as frontline soldiers. All of their Ukrainian education was discarded. They made it illegal to speak Ukrainian. A Ukrainian church was strictly forbidden. Abuse and bad things came with them. You can't have mediation with Putin, Zelensky stressed. We are aware of the results. It has nothing to do with the Vatican, the United States, Latin America, China, or any other nation on earth. Putin is a killer. He is not amenable to negotiations. The Ukrainian head of state implied that the Vatican should support Ukraine's own peace plan if it wanted to do something useful. Zelensky declared, for me, it was an honor to meet His Holiness. But he knows where I stand and where Ukraine stands. Since the conflict is in Ukraine, any strategy for ending it must originate in that country. We've come up with a plan and talked about it today. We would like very much to include the Vatican and Italy in our peace plan, in mending the peace in Ukraine. 